She grew up with a silver spoon in her ass. He grew up eating buttered noodles. She wears a shit ton of makeup. His underwear have holes in them. She lives in Swassville, Florida. It's hot there. He lives in coldest tits, Canada. They both talk way too much. They both love dogs more than humans. They both have a passion to create. This is Chelsea and Josh. Get ready for Beauty and the Dad Bod, a podcast about tons of shit. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Very quick video today. I wanted to update you on a family that I've been covering for a little while. Uh, the Ace family. It's a big deal what's going on in this world. And Sloan, the prince of YouTube, uh, has covered this and he's got a great video on it. He talks about it. He bought the paperwork that talks about what's going on. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on, but I'm going to obviously slide in, you know, some context, what's going on, and then the, the kind of behind the scenes shit that went down and how do we get here? And what does this mean for family vlogging? Because shit's going down. Daily, it's going down. Stuff is happening. We're going to, it's, I, of all the things that I do here, the, the main thing is try to get these kids off YouTube is to, uh, you know, and initially it's not even about shutting down mommy vloggers or family vlogs. I just want the kids off or give them protection. That's all I want to do here. And so that's what we're going to do this. We're talking about today. Let's get to it. Sloan covered it. The Ace family's home is going into foreclosure. I've got the screenshots from Sloan's video here. Thank you, Sloan. I appreciate you paying for that paperwork. So Sloan is, you know, a badass. He covers things with, he does it very well. He doesn't gloat. He doesn't like come at people. He's very straight where I make fun of people relentlessly and I love doing it. But this video is more important. It's not about gloating. It's not about sitting here and saying, you know, ha ha ha. I told you effing so well. I mean, maybe it is a little bit, but again, Sloan had a good point in his video. He said the kids are the only ones who suffer here. And that is a catch 22. That is a rock and a hard place between anti anti family vlogging content. And what do you do about the kids who are in the center of the, in the center of all this? We talked about Jordan Cheyenne recently. That shit has exploded. Okay. Exploded. Every single paper TMZ today, people, everybody has covered the story and I, and perplexed because yes, what she did was insane and people are so angry. It's because they got to see how the sausage is made in that very important conversation because it leads into this because what she did there was disgusting, but what you guys don't seem to realize and some people don't, I don't know why is that that is exactly what everybody does. Look at okay. Baby's thumbnails on their video, blood everywhere, our life, clickbait and blood and sharks and everything else. Everybody does it. Every single person does it. You just got to see her do it. And that's what made you angry. So I want you guys to keep that same energy through every single one of these family vloggers because Jordan Cheyenne is an asshole. What she did was terrible. Yes, absolutely. I've seen way worse from other family vloggers and nobody has energy on that. Specifically the Ace family. Austin McBroom is one of the douchiest YouTubers I mean, we got Jake Paul and Austin McBroom vying for the douchiest. So I'd say eight, Austin's probably number two, you know, with a bullet recently. So what happens in this family vlog world, and I think the LeBrants and everybody who's got like more than 10,000 or 10 million subscribers, they enter into this world of celebrity and it's never, ever enough. It's never enough. This type of behavior, this type of channel, this type of content, it attracts narcissistic people. Who else wants to put their entire life on the world and say, look at me, you guys want to look at me? I'll give you to look at me. That's narcissistic, right? So what you do is you get this guy who was almost, I guess he was a pretty talented basketball player, almost went to the NBA, didn't for whatever reason, meets this other girl who was already kind of famous um, and they get together and it's kind of like, it's like a business partnership. And it, to this day, we know I mean, allegedly, they haven't come out and said it. They don't even have a marriage. This is an arranged situation where they're making money. I promise you, after all of this goes down and they go broke, 
divorce. Well, they're not even married, so it doesn't, I don't know what they're gonna do, civil divorce, whatever the case may be. She's gonna leave him. They are just together right now because the money was there. And now that shit is hitting the fan, I think we're gonna see a, a different story. We're gonna see it change. Austin McBroom's brother is just like him. Okay, and there's a story we're gonna cover on that other channel where that that his wife left and said my kids aren't going on the internet anymore and they're fighting for it. They had a, they had million subscribers or more too. They were making money, but just not enough. This world is disgusting because it's all about money. It is all about money. Now, am I against making money? No, I make money on YouTube. Okay, I love it. It's easy to make money on here if you've got a platform. Okay. But in, when it comes to bringing kids into the situation, like all of these family vloggers do, okay, that when you need your children to make money, and again, I don't even think the Ace family need their damn kids to make money. They are disgusting on themselves. They are like, in the world of celebrity, people like watching them because they're a train wreck, right? People love watching train wrecks. They love watching douchey people. Uh, what's this, Housewives or whatever that's going popping? Those people are douchebags. They love to watch narcissistic assholes be narcissistic assholes. They love it. And that's what these people are. Now, I don't think Catherine is as bad, you know, persona wise, as far as Austin is. Austin is clearly a guy who cheats on his wife. We've, there's many receipts. There's people, text messages, TikToks about it. He has people sign his NDAs. His dad's a disgusting, gross guy who is like his right hand man. And his brother is probably in that as well. We all know that story about Austin. We all know that Austin's a D bag and he treats his family like shit. We get that. We know that. Okay, Catherine McBroom, almost as bad, not just as bad, because she enables it, she allows it to happen. And there are three kids in this picture. This is the problem, everybody. When there's money involved, when there's millions to be made, and the kids are that, are the, your content, that is dangerous because of this, because what is happening with the Ace family. Now, what is happening here? Their home is being foreclosed on because of this effing giant debacle of a boxing thing where Austin said, hey, look, $20 million net worth isn't enough. I want to like go to the top. I need to be like Jake Paul. It's like the race to the top of the douche tower. It's such a weird thing that these guys are like, I want to be the king douche. Jake Paul is the king douche of YouTube. There's, un there's no argument that Jake Paul is the king douche. Jake Paul would likely wear the crown and say, you know what? I am the king douche. I will. And I'm king douche all the way to the bank with my hundreds of millions of dollars. And he doesn't care. That is his persona. But you know what? Jake Paul doesn't have children. Well, <laughs> that we know about, okay? But he doesn't have that. He's just a he's just a selfish douchebag living for himself. And so, you know what? Do what you gotta do, Jake Paul. Do what you gotta do. But when you're when you're Austin McBroom trying to be the douche king of the world, okay, you've got three kids to consider. Okay, you've got a wife to consider, you've got a family that you can you have to consider, and he doesn't seem to consider any of it. And so they're going into, so Sloan discovered it's $9 million worth of debt. Um, what is exactly? $9.3 million worth of debt. And their, their home is being auctioned off at this point, right? As of September 28th at 10.30 a.m., California, TD specialist is trustee, the deputy, whatever. Basically, the house is going to, it's foreclosing and somebody can go buy that shit for real cheap. I'm, I don't know how that all works, but I'm pretty sure you can get that house for way less than $9 million. I think the house is worth close to 10 or more especially in that market. So if you can grab that for 8 million or whatever, it's a steal. That shit's gone. Their house is being foreclosed and their family is going to be kicked out. No amount of legal, lawyer, or whatever you want to do is going to help them at this point. It's done. That is how this works. And you know what? It, hopefully this is an effing wake up call. Hopefully Catherine gets her shit together and leaves this D-bag because at the center of this are the kids that are going to be hurt from this forever. Okay. If you are rich and you're a celebrity and you have kids, your kids enjoy a life, can, can enjoy a life normally, like in the rich world, because they don't have to go to the regular world, right? They don't have to have kids bullying them all shit because they can just go to private school or whatever, right? It doesn't matter. But when you, when you have a massive fall from grace, like from the heights that the Ace family has fallen from, and your kids are going to suffer the most because imagine the stress and the pressure their marriage is under if there is even a marriage, which I don't think there is. But even if they are together in the same house, imagine the stress and the pressure. If Austin McBroom's already an a-hole, okay, imagine what this is doing to him. Imagine what the kids are seeing behind the scenes. You got to see Jordan Cheyenne make a shitty thumbnail, but you don't get to see in behind the thumbnails of these families. And I guarantee you, it's a it's a dirt bag. He's a dirt bag. It's and we we saw the one video where he's like, eh, and he did they did the intro, and he freaked on her. Family. Welcome back to our channel, guys. What's going on, everybody? Ooh, ooh, look at my hair. No. Good thing I don't have to. No, I'm gonna say it. Good thing I don't have to be on camera today. Okay. God. 
Okay. My hair looks f***ed up. I'm not feeling like this. So just go. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Hey, hey it's time And they're like, no, no, that's normal. If they, and that's not even the worst of it. That's just something you saw, and it's way worse than that. I guarantee you. Okay, Austin McBroom is a d bag of the highest order, and he's not a good father. No good father does what he does anyway. Acts the way he does, and is trying to be king douchebag of the world. Okay, that doesn't. There's just no way he's a good dad. And when I say I've seen people do worse things than Jordan Shan, eighth Austin McBroom is one of them. He bought his, I think, his niece. Dick Lollipop from a porn store, one of those stores at the mall that has all the inappropriate adult things. What are you trying to get to? You love what? Oh God. You don't need that. Come here. Show Catherine what you have in your hand. Show Catherine. Show her. She says it's a lollipop. <laughs> And nobody seemed to give a shit. Where was the energy then? Could you imagine that Jordan Cheyenne did that? Bought her kid a dick popsicle? What would you guys have done then? I mean, he smacks his daughter's ass and, mm, and nobody seems to care. I should get fat. I should get fat. God, I can't. Okay, he's been, he's been caught numerous times with receipts cheating on his wife. No one seems to give a shit. The guy caused a, an avalanche or like a mudslide in his neighbor's backyard property because he wanted to be a D-bag. No one seems to give a shit. Okay, this guy does disgusting things and nobody seems to care. And I can name every single family vlogger that I cover, Jess Fam, Our Life, Weiss Life, Brants, that have done worse than that. Okay? And I'm not, it's not to diminish what Jordan did because a lot of people are like, well, I'm not giving her a pass. She's done, everybody. Again, with the pile on with this shit. What is the point? She's done. What else do you want? That's exactly what you guys all wanted. That's what I wanted. Okay, I want these family vloggers to pay the price for what they have done. And that's just one. Mike is the other one. Nikki Philippi is still on. And we're going to talk about this on a podcast I'm doing with uh, Chelsea. It's called Beauty and the Dad Bod. Please head over there on YouTube right now. Go subscribe. We're going to be talking more about the cancel culture and family vlogging and everything else on that podcast. It's going to be a good episode, so make sure you head over there. But all that to say is that I've seen him do worse. We know that he is worse. Jordan Cheyenne did something disgusting. Do you honestly believe that she's worse than Austin McBroom? Now, it's not a race to be the worst, and they're all bad, yes, but he's disgusting, and I want that energy, and people are just here to be like, I don't get it. We got the receipts, we found it out, and Sloan covered it, and then here's the thing. Sloan's not going to say I told you so, because Sloan's a good dude, but I'm going to say I told you so on Sloan's behalf, okay? Austin McBroom came up with this and said, stop capping on me and my family's name. First of all, you're a dad, you're in your 30s, stop saying capping, okay? You are not a gangster hip-hop artist. Stop it, okay? Chill. Um, ain't nobody getting evicted. Ain't nobody moving. Stop believing everything you see the haters say on the internet. If we were moving, we definitely would have informed the world and made it a whole YouTube video about it. Have a good rest of your day. Liars. He's just a damn liar. So you know what? On behalf of Sloan, because he won't. He told you so, bitches. Why lie? Why are you lying? We, 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 it's so easy to find your shit because you're so public. Anybody can find your shit. And when you're in the public eye like these people are, People are looking for your shit. They're looking to tear you down. They're looking to find a way to cancel you because they hate you and you deserve it. If there's anybody who does, deserve, if there are, there are a few, I don't like cancel culture, especially when it comes to politics and things like that. If you have a, a differing view from the left, you can get canceled. I don't like that type of cancel culture, but I love the cancel culture where it's consequence culture. Or you've done something stupid, like rehome an adopted kid from China, and you face the consequences of those actions. When you killed your dog, when you could have rehomed him and then took photos before you did it, that's a cancelable action. That is a consequence that you should suffer. When you are a douchebag and cheat on your wife and treat your kids like that and buy kids dick lollipops and are just completely inappropriate all the time, that is, that is a consequence of your actions. These family vloggers are all doing these actions, okay? And there has to be consequences for what they do. LeBrant's with the fake fire and the fake cancer story, okay? Weiss Life with the bra shopping and the sizing their daughter's chest online. Eight Passengers, Ruby, not feeding her kid and then treating her kids like shit all the time. Our Life with all the clickbait and the periods and everything else and just disgustingness that they are, okay? There needs to be consequences. I sometimes come on here and I make fun of people from a bunch of douchebag channels who are like, eh, he's not doing it. And I have consequences, okay? Everybody deserves the consequence of their action. That is called karma. It's called payback. Everybody wants it. That is what is going on here. People are reveling in this. And 
for good or bad, this is a conversation we need to have because this is like the king shit of family vlogging. They are the biggest one that exists. Almost 20 million subscribers. Imagine this. They're hitting over a million views a, a video still. With 20 million subscribers, that's not a lot of views. But they're still hitting over a million views. Every video the Ace Family releases nets them probably close to $25,000 every single video. Okay? But when you're $9 million in debt, that is like me having $1,000 worth of debt and I get a nickel. It doesn't do anything for them. Okay, not only that, but they've, ma they've amassed so much debt because of their house, their lifestyle, their traveling, their Rolls Royces, their cars, and everything else, and the fact that he's probably had to pay off so many women, no joke, hundreds of thousands of dollars for their silence, and for lawyers, and everything else, and for travel with his family, and paying off his buddies, and everything else. They live a lifestyle that was not sustainable, and they are so far in debt that they could release 100 videos right now, and they would, it, nothing's going to help them. You've got to a point where they're so far in that they're screwed. And I'm pretty sure that the boxing thing that went down with uh, the other douche guy, Bryce, what's his name? Um, Bryce Hall was an effort to say, look, this could be our big ticket out of this debt. We could figure this out. That was what it was supposed to be. He was pushing that shit hard. Okay. And now we realize on the other side that he was pushing it because of this. He thought that was his ticket out and it ended up being, it ended up putting them more in debt, more in the hole. And I can't even imagine the stress and the pressure that they're under, deservedly so, but not for the kids, not for the innocent kids. And that's the dangers of family vlogging. Let's not forget also that the Ace family pulled PPP loans for Ace Hat Collection. They got free money from the government. And imagine this for a second. They took all this free money and they are still now going out of business. They are still... <laughs> going to be foreclosed on. They're going to live. You know what? They still could probably likely live comfortably. Just sell everything, get rid of it, start at zero, bankrupt yourself, whatever it's going to take and start living normal. Get off the effing internet. At, at minimum, please take your kids off. Catherine McBroom, you're a weirdo and your shit that you're doing in the channel she's starting. Great. I'm glad that you're a weirdo and you love all the unicorn rainbows and mermaids and all that shit. Cool. Just don't bring your kids into it. Do it without your kids. Treat your kids fair. Look at Kardashian. You guys all want to be like the Kardashians. At least, you know, for the douchebaggery that they are, at least they don't put their kids out like you guys do. They don't need to, but at least you don't. And you don't need to either. So this is my plea to you. I don't know if this is even going to... You're never going to see. I don't give a shit. But please, your kids are the ones going to suffer. Catherine, if Austin is treating you the way we all think he is, why are you still there? Why are you throwing your kids through that shit? Imagine a dad that travels to Miami and all over the place, bangs a bunch of women, pays them off, with an, and makes them sign NDAs, allegedly, okay? Comes back home to what? what's the energy that he's leaving as a father? What is the legacy he's leaving as a dad? What are your kids going to see from their dad when they get older? And you too, Catherine. You're not, you're not without blame. But what are your kids going to see? What is the legacy you're going to leave your kids? Nobody talks about that. What are the legacy these family vloggers are going to leave their kids? When wife's life, like let's take our life for example. Our kids are, I think her daughter's 16, getting up there in age, going to go to college soon. Imagine this for a second. Okay, she exits the thing, whatever, goes to college, finds a husband, has kids and everything else. When those kids grow up and watch what their grandmother did, like what is the legacy you've left? What is the legacy for your children that you exploited them for money and you made a ton of cash off them? That's what you left. There's nothing good that comes from this. There's no awareness that you raised for anything, fathering autism. All you did was exploit. And that's what everybody's going to see in the end. This conversation just in the past couple of weeks has exploded. The Piper Raquel story. Oh my God. Okay, wait until you hear the shit that we're finding out about the story. And I'm pretty sure that they're attacking my channel. I'm, I'm actually almost dead sure they're attacking my channel because that's what they do. And they're, they, they, they do a, it's not a DDoS attack, but they basically have this algorithm. They pay this Russian bot farm or whatever to watch your video for two seconds, cut off, download it or whatever the case may be. And it puts you in a, in, a, in a different algorithm. It's so weird what they do. And I have corroboration from other parents in the Piper Raquel circle, the Tiffany Raquel circle that will admit to this. Okay, and they'll say, man, we used to get a million hits, now we get 10,000. And again, I don't give a shit. I will uncover this story no matter what it takes. You want to shadow ban me and put me down to five views a video? I don't care. I'm not ever going to stop talking about this, ever. Okay, but that's, 
Again, we're, this is exploding, this conversation exploding. Daniel Cohn, Piper Raquel, Everly LeBrant, everybody's catching on. Pink tweets about it, that shit goes crazy. Now everybody's covering that story. Jordan, Jordan Cheyenne releases something that gets people pissed. They finally see how this is made and they're like, what the F is this? Then everybody's talking about it. This is important. This is what it's all about. And these people are the top of the top. How did they get here? Well, here's how they got here. Rolls Royces, expensive Ferraris, cars galore, failed businesses and scams that they've done over the years. They did juice, they did friggin' clothes, they did everything. And at some point you gotta figure out, well, they might get a quick boost at the beginning, but most people are frivolous when it comes to YouTube, okay? Your fans aren't really your fans, don't give a shit. No one's gonna walk around with an Ace Family shirt and like, hey, you got an Ace Family shirt. No one knows really who the Ace Family is. Okay, if you live on YouTube, it's a different world. But they've got so much, they live so high on the hog, they're so far in debt, that now they are literally destroyed because they wanted to show you the flex, the family vlogger flex, and they all do this to some degree. Okay, they, they flex. And you know how most of them flex by doing a vlog in their living room and it sounds like they're in the freaking cathedral in Notre Dame. Hey, welcome to my vlog. That's the flex. Look at the cars they drive. Look at the travel they do. It's about the flex. Look at bits of brie. Moving to Hawaii, she now owns two homes, one in Ohio, one in Hawaii. She only has like 400,000 subscribers. What is it with this flex? It's they have to keep showing you that they're amazing because people love, viscerally love to watch people have way more shit than they have. It is, I will agree, I and I admit to that. I love watching Mr. Beast give away a million dollars, give away all this shit, that's amazing. People love watching that stuff. They love it. But in the end, it's not sustainable. It isn't. And who suffers? The kids. The kids, the kids. Every single time. I said it was gonna be a short one. It is gonna be a short one. So Ace Family, Austin McBroom, Catherine Broom, do yourselves a favor and start being parents. And stop being douchebag influencers because you are terrible. What is the message you're giving everybody right now? That lying and cheating and everything else is not good. And that's actually a good thing. I'm glad this is happening. I'm not glad for the kids. I'm glad this is happening but at the same time, I'm sad that the kids are the ones gonna suffer from this. But in the end, if you really think about it, I think the kids are gonna be okay. I mean, they've likely got a better support system behind the scenes from Catherine and Austin, maybe parents, grandparents who are likely aren't assholes. So I'm pretty sure these kids are gonna be okay, but it's gonna be really interesting to see what they're gonna do next. What are they gonna try to do next? And it's gonna be crazy to see when people get desperate what they will actually do. And I really, really hope the kids stay protected. I hope Catherine leaves Austin. I hope that these kids can have a normal life outside of the public eye. I hope they don't put them on TikTok, on YouTube and get their own channels. I just hope they don't do that. People really need to understand how dangerous this is and how bad it's getting. And we're gonna talk about that on episode two of Beauty and the Dad Bod. We're gonna talk about these relationships that people, parasocial relationships that people create with creators and family vlogs and how dangerous that is because people are getting murdered, everybody. They are getting murdered. Shit is going down in this world and we're going to uncover it and we're going to keep talking about it. It is an important topic and discussion. Austin Broom, you have any humanity left in your soul and you are any semblance of a father. Get therapy, seek help, figure your shit out, take a major step back and figure out how you can live your life and see if you can get some forgiveness from your kids. Because in the end, you guys are all going to ask forgiveness from your kids. That is who you're going to ask forgiveness for and I hope to God they give it to you, but you don't deserve it. Think of the futures of your children, everybody. Think of their future. What are you leaving them? What is your legacy? A lot of people come out, oh, Josh, your legacy is making fun of people. Yeah, but in the end, look what we're talking about. Look where this conversation has happened. This week alone, I have a Google thing that pops up every time the Dad Challenge podcast is mentioned or Joshua Barber is mentioned. There's been at least 15 publications that have mentioned my name or this podcast in this conversation. So... Haters stay mad. What I'm doing is working. And for those of you who just come at me for the pettiest shit, you can kiss my ass. I don't care. Keep doing what you want to do. But what I'm doing is working. What you're doing clearly isn't. And you know what? It's only because of the people who watch and support this and share it. It is not just me. It is you guys. So take a deep breath. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the places. Incredible that you guys are here with me. I don't want to take credit for this because it is you. I, I'm not here without you. 
I cannot even hear without my haters. Thank you for talking about me and putting my name out there. I really appreciate it. But it's those here who understand and are having the adult conversation with me, who are sitting here and realizing what's going on and are waking up. I love it. And you guys are incredible and you are very valuable. And don't ever forget it. And I'll see you tomorrow.